All right, folks, and you're on another episode of Exploring Shasta County History. I'm your host, Jeremy M. Tuggle. Today, we're out here at a very historic site. This used to be part of what was called the Shasta to Weaverville Road. Very historic location now underneath uh, Whiskey Town Lake, which is where I am at. I'm out here with my buddy, Robert Frazier of California and Earth. It's right over there. And as you can see, we are on the old U.S. Highway Route 299. The Gannon Mine is right over there in the distance. If you look closely enough, you can see a white tailing pile on the hillside there where the traffic is coming through just above that. Obata Marina is right out here. And emerging out of the water is historic U.S. Route 299. And I say historic because this portion of Highway 299 was abandoned years ago. Now I have more info on uh, the history here in the video. So stay tuned as I take you along this historic sunken road. Oh look, Robert's picking up a ride. He's hitchhiking. Yep, it's got the thumb right on out. There you have it, folks. That's the host of California and Earth there. And let's take a journey. This is actually my first time ever walking this historic abandoned piece of Highway 299. I'm usually seen kayaking over it I want to show you the sign right up here so I'm going off road a little bit Danger sunken road. And once again, this is Whiskey Town Lake. can easily tell where the water line has been. Helicopter flying over there. I hope I got that. The Shasta to Weaverville Road, or the Weaverville to Shasta Road, has been well traveled by pack train since 1850. It was often deemed as a hard road to travel. However, developing this trail into a wagon road was a slow process until it was debated by the California Legislature in the State Assembly and the route was finally authorized to be changed to an official wagon road in April of 1854 by them. From an excerpt of an article by, published by the Shasta Courier newspaper Shasta on January 6, 1855, it's learned that the Trinity Times says a wagon road is now being built between Weaverville and Shasta, which will be completed perhaps by the 1st of May next. It was William S. Loudon, his surname is sometimes spelled as Loudon, L-O-U-D-E-N. 
a resident of Weaverville, who was awarded the contract for the project, which could be completed for $19,000. It, it allowed $1,000 of that money to be utilized for incidental expenses and surveys. During the course of construction for this route, it was Loudon who established the Shasta and Weaverville Wagon Road Company on June 22, 1857, with John C. Birch as secretary and W.C. Tennant as treasurer of this company. Their capital stock was not released to the public. However, the construction surpassed the date given in the above excerpt, and the Shasta to Weaverville Road wasn't open for public travel until late December of 1857 as a toll route. Yet road work was still in progress on the route in the upcoming months and stages weren't able to travel on the new roadway yet. A considerable amount of rainfall in March and April completely damaged the new road to the point that major repairs were made by the Shasta and Weaverville Wagon Road Company and because of the rain it delayed the arrival and journey of the first stage across this route. The first stage to complete the journey and arrive in Weaverville from Shasta was a stage belonging to the California Stage Company of Shasta which reached Weaverville on April 25, 1858. This road now allowed dependable travel for people riding horses, driving wagons, stages, and pack trains from Shasta to Weaverville and from Weaverville to Shasta as travelers populated this dusty route. It became a portion of Main Street in the town site of Whiskeytown and was constructed through the area, and then in 1878, this route was placed into a graded condition. The route was shortened at a great expense that year, and a trip to Weaverville from Reading could be made in 21 and a half hours, which was claimed by travelers traveling this road from Reading to Weaverville or Weaverville to Reading, passing through steep grades and sharp turns, which are still prominent features of this highway today for automobiles traveling along the present-day U.S. Highway 299 route. The first realignment to this Pioneer Route was done in 1923, and after the new improvements were made, it remained in use until 1934, when this road became a major part of the U.S. Highway 299 Route. Beginning in 1934, it was officially called U.S. Highway 299, or Highway 299, and the route remained driven until the 1950s when another realignment improvement was made and rerouted further east. The old route was abandoned. Between 1960 to 1963, the construction of Whiskeytown Dam occurred, with the contract being let by the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation to Gibbons and Reed Company of Salt Lake City, Utah. Here, a brand new dam was being built by them, from which a lake would cover the Whiskeytown town site, and an original stretch of this roadway by the creation of Whiskeytown Lake. The dam, when completed, was dedicated by President John F. Kennedy on September 28, 1963. Presently, this route is also known as the Trinity Highway. Uh, every winter, Whiskeytown Lake is lowered by 10 feet, and a loss portion of U.S. Highway 299 reveals itself south of the present-day stretch of highway near the present-day way station along the highway opposite of the historic Gannon Mine. When the lake is full, only a small section of this abandoned hidden road can be viewed in part or by kayaking over it on Whiskeytown Lake. As Robert and I are out here today, you can see this stretch of road that still exists that we're walking along. Uh, the lake level is currently 11.36 feet below the crest or uh, below full pool. This is Whiskeytown Lake.
that's back the way we came from. And no, it does not branch off to the right. It just keeps going straight. And no, it does not branch off to the left either. It goes straight across. a little water marker and the road continues All right, folks, thanks for joining me on this episode of Exploring Shasta County History. If you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button 
and follow my friend Robert Frazier at California Unearthed. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.